Alhamdulillah, astaghfirullah. Astaghfirullah al-Azim al-Ladhi la ilaha illahu al-Hayyun al-Qayyum wa atubu ilayhi. Astaghfirullah al-Azim al-Ladhi la ilaha illahu al-Hayyun al-Qayyum wa atubu ilayhi. Astaghfirullah al-Azim al-Ladhi la ilaha illahu al-Hayyun al-Qayyum wa atubu ilayhi. Allahumma aghfir lana wa arhamna wa tuba alayna inna ka anta tawab rahim. Allahumma la tawakhidna bima fa'ala sufahau minna. Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salamu ala sayyidin wa habibina rasulillah wa ala alihi wa ashabihi wa man wala. Allahumma inna na'udhu bika min shururi anfusina wa msayyati amalina. Allahumma inna mu'minun wa nastaghfiruka wa nutubu ilayk wa hana ahnu. متذللون أمامكم وأنت أرحم الراحمين أنت الذي خلقتنا وأنت الذي هديتنا وأنت الذي جعلت هذا الدين الكريم هداية لنا وهدية لأنفسنا منكم ومن فضلكم يا أرحم الراحمين الحمد لله the the human condition is a a condition of tribulation you know Imam al Junaid he said that Al-Saltu Aslan, that I took as a foundational principle, like an axiom, something you live by. Um, and, since, and since I took that as, as a principle to live my life by, I've never been troubled by what the world brings to me. And he said, and the principle is that a dunya daru hammen, wa ghammen, wa bala'in, wa ibtila'in, wa fitna. Wa tadaqani bi kulli ma akrahu. That th this dunya is an abode of tribulation, uh, of of uh, difficulties, of uh, grief and sorrow, and uh, and uh, also strife and conflict. And it's designed to meet me with everything that I dislike. And so he said that that's the principle that he he took as foundational to his life. And then he said, so whenever it, it comes with other than those things, it's pure grace from Allah. And you have to be, feel an immense sense of gratitude. Um, and, but he said, but the first is the asl. So the other is fadl. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that he created the human beings to try them, to test them. And these are the tests that come. Uh, and, and, but he also tells us, constantly in the Quran that if you make toba and turn to Allah that he will uh, send good to you and, and do good things and so part of the problem with humans is that they they do all this sinfulness and then they don't when when when, when they actually get the results of their sins they don't take responsibility and and that's it that's not just in 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 big things like that are happening but also in just lesser things, so in your individual lives. So collectively, because the judgment of, uh, of nations is in the dunya. You know, the, the judgment of nations is in the dunya. The judgment of individuals in the akhirah. So in the, in the, in the, uh, in the Quran, Allah says, لَا تَزِرُوا وَازِرَةٌ أُخْرَى No sin bears the sins of another person. Uh, Ibn Arabi actually... I think had the most profound understanding of that because he said that's actually in the akhirah, it's not in the dunya, is that lots of people bear the sins of other people in the dunya. You get affected by what people did. So people now in the Middle East are suffering because what people did a hundred years ago. Right? So we actually do get the effects of, but we're not taken to account for those sins. And that's why in the akhirah only is the judgment of individuals, not the judgment of nations. People are judged as individual. But in the dunya, the good, the bad, the ugly, everybody, when the tribulation comes, it gets the innocent, the children. You know, haven't they seen how children suffer? Don't think that Allah doesn't um, uh, test people collectively in the dunya. In the akhirah, there's no imtazul yawm ayyuhan mujirimun. All the mujirimun over to the side here. And, and then it's split. And then even on the Sirat, the Prophet ﷺ said that there's these, there's these machine, they're like scanners, you know, and they come and, they, and they're made of metal. The Prophet ﷺ said that, and they have like clamps, so they clamp onto the soul. So this is some spiritual thing. We can't understand it 
to, but everybody's going to see it. So when you're walking across the Sirat, these they scan you, and and if if the iman's not strong, then it latches on, and it, and we know now they do these scans and they can see if your body's sick or not. So the spiritual scanning makes perfect sense. So they it latches on and then the soul will fight. And that's why the Prophet is at the end of this sirat saying, Allahumma sallam sallam, like help my people. Astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah wa tubu ilayhi. Allahumma gfilana wa rahamna wa tubu alayna inna kanta tubu wa rahim. Sayyidina Nuh, who is, you know, just subhanallah, one of the, the Ulil Azmi min al Rusul, and, and he was with a people that mocked him for a long time. The Quran says uh, almost a thousand years it, he was mocked by his people, and he just kept calling them in total utter patience. And then the moment that Allah told them that they won't know, nobody's going to believe, then he asked to remove them. As long as he had hope that they would believe, but when Allah told him that your people will not believe, that was the point when he made the dua against them, and and uh, which is very rare for prophets because they generally don't make dua against their people. They ask for their people's guidance. The Prophet ﷺ was asked in the Sahih Hadith to make dua against the mushrikeen. It's in Sahih Muslim, and he said, "Ma bu'atu la'ana, lakinni bu'atu rahma." I wasn't sent to curse. I was sent to as a mercy. So. Uh, he was always looking uh, for the mercy. But Nuh salam, he told them, rabbakum. Like, ask forgiveness. He will forgive you. He's off forgiving. He will send the rains from the heavens for you. And he was telling them that if you ask forgiveness and turn to Allah. So these tribulations are actually opportunities to make tawbah and just to repent and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive us and uh, to... Uh, you know, to 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 um, you know, to remove uh, uh, these these blights from us. So really, and this is what in Surah Al Rum, when Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, "Zahar al fasad fi al bari wal bahri bima kisat aida nas." You know that fasad, which is a comprehensive word. There's no single translation in English for that word because it it, ha it has pollution, it has corruption, it has uh, foulness, it has. Uh, a lot of different meanings in the Arabic language. You say fasadat al faqiha you know, the fruit went bad, right? So it, it has many things. Fasad um, asnan you know, dental caries are fasad. So things, when they go bad, it's fasad. So, so this foulness has sh shown up, manifested on the land and in the sea. In uh, one of the great Turkish Ottoman uh, Qadis and Mufassirun, he's, he's buried in Istanbul. In his tafsir, he says, uh, fasad al -haraiq. Mm -hmm. One of the signs of this fasad is fires that spread. So, so pe people don't realize that, that there's, a, there's a metaphysical, just like you have laws of physics, so in laws of physics, you know, a, 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 in Newtonian physics, not in quantum, but in Newtonian, a body at rest will stay at rest unless acted upon by another body. That's a law of physics. So it's cause and effect. But there are metaphysical laws. And this is where the prophets, the physical laws can be understood by the aqal, but the metaphysical laws can only under, uh, be understood by wahi, by revelation. And the difference of the people is the people that believe those metaphysical laws uh, and the people that don't. If you don't believe the physical laws in this dunya, like if you're driving 100 miles per hour and you think you can go through that wall, you will die. If, if you think you can jump off a roof like in a film or something, you know, these Chinese films where they jump off high roofs and they just land, they're like flying. If you think you can do that, and I mean, I'm sure there's probably awliya that could do that. <laughs> but for us, if you think you can do that, you will kill yourself because you're, you're, you're going against physical laws of physics. The metaphysical laws are exactly the same if you go against them. And one of the things about the metaphysical laws is that they're not the same. They're, they're different for different people. Like physical laws, we all share them. Metaphysical laws are different. The more you know, the worse it is. The more you know. And that's why the, uh, 
in the 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 the, the, the Sufis who have very interesting understanding of the world, they would always look on people that were sinful as maybe better than them if they were ignorant because they knew and they were still sinning. So, so, and that's why the Ummah gets more tribulation. The Prophet said, Yu'ila adabu ummati fi dunyaha. The adab of my Ummah is in this dunya. So the other people, you see them, and Muslims wonder, like, when we have earthquakes, 10,000 people die. When they have earthquakes, 10 people die. And the Muslims wonder, like, why? What's happening? I mean, partly it's because they have much better engineers and they have all these codes that we used to have. The Ottomans had those things. That's true. But the other thing is a reality, too, is that, you know, this is the adab of, of, uh, of our ummah is in this world. And, 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 but in the next world, all the people that had wonderful time here, many of them will have horrible time there. Not all of them, but many of them. And the people that suffered the most here won't even remember their suffering. There's a river that you swim through in, in Jannah and you come out on the other side, the river of life. And pe the people that suffered the most, are, they're like fahm when they go into the river coming out of hell. But when they go into the river, it, they're restored. And Allah asks them, have you ever known suffering? They say, la wallahi. You know, I never knew suffering. So these things aren't fairy tales. They're, they're things that the, are, the prophets came and, and the prophets bring them in all these different places around the earth. Where did they get the, where did they get the, and through long periods of time, like a, a Jewish prophet, and then 500 years later, another Jewish prophet saying the same thing. Because nobody, teachers have students and they disagree with them, you know, in dunya sciences. But not in the akhirah sciences, they're in agreement. <laughs> May Allah forgive us all. Alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala Sayyidina Rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man wala. Alhamdulillah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he said, وَلَا نَبُلُوَنَّكُمْ بِشَيْءٍ مِنَ الْخَوْفِ وَجُعِي مُنَقْصِ مِنَ الْأَمْوَالِ وَالْأَنفُسِ وَالْثَمَرَاتِ When he said that, uh, the, the Mufassirun say that this is invar, like Allah is actually letting us know, like you have a warning. So Allah is telling you that I'm going to try you. And it's done with a strong, you know, the, these instruments in Arabic that indicate ta'akid. You know, it's, it's strong, it's emphatic. I will try you with loss of, uh, with something of fear uh, and hunger and loss of 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 uh, al anfus which doesn't just mean loss of life it, you can lose astaghfirullah you can lose uh, an arm or an eye or you can lose uh, people lose their minds you know they the prophet actually sought refuge from from junun allah min adukum al junun jununi wal judam wa su al asqam i seek refuge in you from madness because people get afflicted with madness and from uh, like vitiligo and from foul diseases you know, like saratan. These are things the Prophet said. Uh, his uncle Abbas came to him and he said, he said, Ya Rasulullah, uh, you know, teach me something that I can ask Allah. And he said, Sallallahu al -afiyya. He said, ask Allah for well-being. And then Abbas said, I, I went for several days, and then I came back, and he said, Ya Rasulullah, alimni shayn asalullah, teach me something that, that and he said, Ya, ya Amma Rasulillah, Salilah al -afiyah. You know, he just reiterated it. Like, ask Allah for, well, afia is comprehensive word for just being in a good state. Like right now, what a blessing. You know, the air is much clearer than it's been in the last... Uh, these are, and so the more gratitude we show, He's declared that if you show gratitude, He will increase you. But the tri trials and tribulations will come. And some of you, I know there's people in this here just sitting in this gathering that have, have had immense tribulation in your life. And, and the Prophet ﷺ said, If Allah loves the people, they get more tribulation. 
you know, so that there's, there's a lot of tribulation. Now, the other thing about this country, and I got into trouble years ago, like the day before 9-11, for saying that this country had a great tribulation coming to it, you know. But people here don't relate what, what we do in other places to what happens here, you know. And I mean, my father, who became Muslim at the very end of his life with uh, Dr. Assad, you know, he was a very uh, contemplative person. You know, he thought very deeply about things. Before, long before he was a Muslim, he was so distraught about what happened in Iraq. You know, he just, he was distraught. You know, and he was a World War II veteran. So he, I mean, he joined the Air Force at 17, you know, got an early diploma from high school. And that was the type of war that they saw that, you know, like everybody felt it was a just war. But he was so troubled, and he used to tell me, he, and, and he, I never heard him use this word, but he, he said one day, he said, I really am troubled by the karma that this country has coming to it. You know? So th this country needs Toba because they don't realize there's a lot of good people in this country, and, and most of them aren't responsible for what's happened. But, but because there's so little real concern about what happens, and they just, one thing happens after another and people sit by and watch these things happen and don't really do anything, that that, that builds up. And so uh, we don't know what's coming to this country, but it's, it's, these are troubling times. You know, these are troubling times. And uh, you can see the country kind of being pulled apart at the seams, you know, and people, different people came here. Some of you came as refugees. I, I know a few people in here are refugees. And this country was a, a great refuge for, for people and, and provide a lot of opportunities. Uh, those of us who were born here and raised here, uh, I don't want harm for this country. I don't want any evil for this country. I, you know, these are uh, good people generally, and, and, but, there, but there's a real lack of guidance. Um, and they've, this country has lost its way. You know, it's lost its way. I mean, they, they had guidance in their Christian tradition, but the many people have abandoned that. Their young people don't, they have no guidance like spiritual, because the Ten Commandments is a huge amount of guidance. Like if you just follow the Ten Commandments, you, you are in good shape with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, so we, we, we should, you know, just ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to, to be, Ya Latif is a good name, in fact, Traditionally, the people of Allah, that was the name that they called on, was the, the Ya Latif. Because it's the, the name that يجلب الخير ويدفع الشر. It brings good and it, and it uh, repels harm. Alhamdulillah. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, inshallah, to, uh, you know, to forgive all of us and to, uh, to just bring some guidance to uh, this, this country. You know, and and uh, you know, and toba, you know, repentance, because because we, we they used to have these days of repentance. Like in, the sunnah of this prayer is to fast three days before, because fasting, you do fasting as a way of expiation. In our religion, fasting is two. It's it's for ibadah, but it's also for expiation. Like when you when you do wrongs, uh, fasting can be an expiation for it. Um, but in this country, they used to have days of fasting. Like literally, the president of the United States would tell everybody to fast and repent. I mean, that, that was a practice in this country. They don't do things like that anymore. And if you do, they think you're crazy. So uh, th these are things that we should do. So I'm going to make dua, inshallah. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive us and to, uh, uh, to uh, just return us to, uh, to guidance our community and also the greater community people just stay um bismillah ar-rahman ar-rahim wa salatu wa salamu ala sayyidina muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa salam tasliman kathira allahumma innaka anta tasma'u man يدعوك فاسمع لنا يا أرحم الراحمين الله مستجب أنت قلت وقولك الحق أنك تجيب المضطر إذا دعاك اللهم نحن مضطرون 
في هذا البلاء وفي هذه الفتن وفي هذه هذا الوباء ونسألك يا أرحم الراحمين أن تتوب علينا إنك أنت التواب يا الله نستغفرك ونتوب إليك إنك أنت التواب اللهم اغفر لنا وارحمنا يا رب العالمين يا رحم الرحمين يا لطيف يا لطيف أنت لطيف بعبادك فالطف بنا فيما جرت به المقادير اللهم أكشف عنا العذاب اللهم أكشف عنا هذا الدخان اللهم أكشف عنا هذه الحرائق اللهم أطفي هذه الحرائق يا رحم الرحمين بماء السماء أنت أرحم الرحمين اللهم أنت الذي خلقتنا ونحن مخلوقون ضعفاء لا قوة له ولا حول لنا أنت القوي وأنت العزيز وأنت القادر على كل شيء اللهم اقدر لنا يا الله الخير حيثما كان اللهم اقدر لنا الخير حيثما كان يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم اغفر هذا القوم في أنهم لا يعلمون اللهم اغفر هذا القوم في أنهم لا يعلمون اللهم ردهم إلى رشدهم يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم بارك في هذه الأرض يا الله اللهم اسقي البهائم والحيوانات والطيور أنت أرحم الراحمين لا إله إلا أنت سبحانك اللهم يا رحيم اللهم أرحم بنا يا لطيف ألطف بنا يا غفار اغفر لنا يا عزيز أعزنا اللهم يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم يا تواب اللهم يا عظيم اللهم يا عظيم عظم إيماننا في قلوبنا يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم يا صبور صبرنا يا الله اللهم يا صبور صبرنا يا الله اللهم اغفر لنا وارحمنا وتب علينا اللهم اسقي غيثا لنا يا الله اللهم اسقي لنا غيثا يا الله اللهم اغثنا يا يا مغيث يا مغيث يا مغيث اللهم اغثنا يا مغيث اللهم أغثنا يا مغيث اللهم أطفي هذه النيران اللهم أطفي هذه الحرائق اللهم اغفر لنا وارحمنا وتب علينا وجعل هذا في صحيفتنا يوم القيامة اللهم جعل هذا الإيمان في صحيفتنا يوم القيامة لا سمعة ولا رياء يا رحم الراحمين اللهم أنت الحق اللهم أنت العظيم اللهم آمنا بك اللهم نؤمن بك ونؤمن بنبيك الكريم ورضينا به نبيا ورسولا ورضينا بالقرآن كتابا ودستورا ورضينا بك يا عظيم ربا كريما اللهم عافينا في أبداننا وعافينا في أراضينا وعافينا في طعام في طعامنا وفي شرابنا اللهم عافينا يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم اجعل هذا النبي الكريم شافعا مشفعا لنا الدنيا والآخرة يا أرحم الراحمين وصلي اللهم على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون والسلام على المرسلين الحمد لله رب العالمين الحمد لله الله يتقبل إن شاء الله